This is the tutorial on the developmental assessment of young children, or also known as the DAC-2. Um, the purpose of this assessment is to help identify children who are significantly below their peers in the following domains, cognition, communication, social-emotional, development, and adaptive behavior abilities. The test is broken up into those five domains. So we're going to get started with the cognitive domain. First, in section one, we're going to identify the patient female, male, record um, when the date was tested, or the date it was tested, the date of birth, and for this assessment we calculate everything when it age in months. So in order to figure out the age in months, we're going to go over here and we're going to subtract the date tested and the date of birth. So we're going to write the date tested, which comes right from section one, and the date of birth. Okay, so we, since we can't take 24 out of 16, we're going to borrow from months. Forty-six minus 24 is 22. Um, since we can't take 12 away from 8, we're going to borrow again. And then, so since there are 12 months in a year, we add 12 and we get 20. And then 20 minus 12 is 9. 2014 minus 2011 is 3. And then since we record everything in months, we have to convert this, the years, into months. So we'll multiply it by 12 since there are 12 months in a year. And we get 36 plus 9 equals 44 months. And then we don't do anything with the days, but we do list it over here in the age. So we're going to write for the year, we're going to write three years, nine months, and 22 days. And then we have 44 months. So the starting point of the assessment is determined by the child's age. So since the child age, child's age is 44 months, we will turn to section five. Go to entry score and find 44 months. So 44 months falls right under here, the 36 to the 47, and it looks like we start on item 40. So we go find item 40. And we're gonna circle it. So for every question, um, we start on 40, and for every yes, they get one point, and for every no, they get zero points. We would administer the items until three consecutive items receive a zero. So we're gonna go down, and we see there's three zeros here. So we're gonna go 44 to 46. Once we get here, these three scores are considered the ceiling. After we find that, we will look at the previous items before the ceiling and find the first three consecutive items that receive a one. And we go up. And here we are, 30 to 32. Once we get here, these scores are considered the basal. Now that we identified the ceiling and the basal scores, we can figure out the raw score. In order to calculate the raw score, we go back to each item before the basal. So 30, starting from 30 to 32, and give them one point, including the basal and all of those items that received one point in between the ceiling and the basal. So in other words, we're going to go all the way until the end of the basal. So that's 32 points because all of these will receive one. So we have 32. And then we're going to go through the items in between the basal and the ceiling and count all of the items that received a one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to add the 32 and the six, which gives us the raw score of 38. So we're going to go back to the first page, find raw score, and write 38. Next is the age equivalent. In order to find this, we have to pull out the Appendix A and find the raw score. In the Appendix A, under the raw score of 38, it is 29. So we're going to put 29 at age equivalent. Next is to convert the raw score into a standard score. In order to do this, we pull out Appendix B. We go to the table that reflects the actual age 
which is 44 months. We will find that the raw score, we will find the raw score, go across to the right category, and we find that the standard score is 77. The next thing is to convert the standard score to a percentile rank. In order to do this, we will pull out the appendix C. Since the standard score for cognition is 77, the percentile rank is 6. This means that the child performed the same or better than 19% of his sample peers, or 94% of the sample peers scored higher than this child. Up next is the standard error of measurement, which is used to estimate the amount of error in an individual's test score due to less than perfect re reliability of the test. The standard error measurement is always three. Lastly, we determine the des descriptive terms. So we go back to section two, to section two and three, and we find the standard score of the child, which is 77. So we find where 77 falls, and it's right here under poor. So under this descriptive terms, we write poor. After all domains are completed, we will jump over to the examiner's summary sheet. We will fill out section one just like we did for the rest of the domains. And then we will fill out the results for each domain. So here you can see each domain. And I already filled out all the results for time purposes. Um, the next thing that we have to do is the general development index or also known as the GDI. So in order to or determine the GDI, we add together all of the standard scores for each domain. So the sum of the standard scores, which is 460. And then we turn to Appendix E and we find the related GDI score, which is 88. Now that we know the standard score, we can go back to Appendix C to determine the percentile rank. So we do exactly what we did before to figure this out. And the standard score is 88, so the percentile rank is 21. And again, that's in Appendix C. So the last thing we have to figure out is the descriptive term. And again, we find the standard score, which is 88. And we find where 88 falls, and it, we find that it's below average. And that's how you do the